welcome to Start Building Me's Rebuild, day five. Uh, I didn't exactly take the day off, but I didn't really do a whole bunch. So I walk the dogs as always. I always walk a minimum of six kilometers a day. That is my day off. I'll always do a few push-ups, a few chin-ups, bits and pieces, kettlebell swings, maybe just uh, some farmer's walks and stuff. I didn't cycle though, it's uh, nice tropical storms here at the moment in far north Queensland in Australia, so I gave it the day off. Feeling a little bit froggy in my throat. It could be the uh, keto flu prevailing, or I'm maybe just a little bit dehydrated. I would have been fine to cycle, and I could put Swift up and do a Swift ride. Uh, but I think I won't bother, to be honest. Um, may as well take it as a day off, like I said. I'll, there is no real day off in my world. I'll always be doing something, and that's the habit that I'm trying to instill in everybody who is looking at this as a how-to guide. Folks, every day you're going to be doing something more or less. You know, you might not be going to the gym, or you might not be going on a big ride, but you should always be, you know, maybe commuting somewhere by a bicycle or walking. Um, half of the reason I didn't cycle is because it is Friday and I usually up my diet to junk food, but at the moment I'm doing an experiment, so I'm not going to bother. But nonetheless, 120 grams of protein and 100 grams of sauerkraut was enough to tip the scales, and uh, I didn't really want to revisit what I just had by uh, doing a big cycle, shutting down my digestive system, which happens. Um, after you've just eaten a lot and you then go and start using your muscles and getting all that blood pumping into your muscles, all of a sudden the blood, you know, your digestive system sort of shuts down and makes you feel a little bit ill. And after five days, like this is just five days of dieting, so a restricted calorie diet, and all of a sudden it becomes a lot harder to gorge yourself with food. So that's exactly why I'm trying to show people how important a restricted calorie diet is, or just tailoring your diet to be eating based on what exercise you're doing. So if you're going and doing a 120 kilometer Tour de France stage, then you could eat big. You probably even wouldn't want to. I'm not too sure. I haven't really looked at cycling protocols like that. I have a feeling they'll probably feel too bloated and they would want to use uh, most of their energy when they're sleeping to heal. So it would probably be a heavy protein diet, a bit of fat, uh, and probably not so much bulk in there. Something that I will be researching for future videos undoubtedly because those guys are machines. So I'll put up my stats. Everything looked more or less the same. I can't think of any deviations there at all. Other than with the dietary, obviously starting to add uh, sauerkraut because I'm a big fan of sauerkraut. It has prebiotic properties. It's good to cleanse your system, just like a psyllium husk in addition. So I think it's probably not a bad time to add it in. I wasn't going to change anything until next week, but I got a bit peckish and threw it in the fridge and thought, hey, 100 grams doesn't take me out of ketosis, so I may as well put it in now. But everything's feeling good. A little bit of medial tendon in my elbow there. It was a little bit worked, as I think I said yesterday or the day before. So I've got a mallet that I sit at with my desk. And you're doing that range of motion pretty much. And I've also got a, a Voodoo Floss band, which is uh, like a rubber uh, compression band, bandage that you wrap tight around the limb where the tendon is that you're trying to heal. And you, you run it three different ranges of motion supposed to in that time the way it has been explained to me before it's like a spaghetti after you've taken it out of the pot and it's all tangled up <clears throat> when you're voodoo flossing you press the blood out of that area and it basically aligns it and keeps all the tendon fibers uh, in in order how much of that is true i'm not too sure as i said all this stuff i'll have a different rehabilitation series coming up and start building me because I find that one is pretty important. If that, I mean, voodoo flossing does work for me. So I'll obviously get to the bottom of exactly why it works to explain it to you in a simple form. But more importantly, it does actually work. And I've used it a lot of times to uh, stop damage from cycling, wrestling, um, and rock climbing, obviously the big one. 
Uh, so we'll get to the bottom of that. But like I said, Voodoo Flossing is great. And um, yeah, so looking pretty good. Day five. Uh, all right, as I uh, forgot, uh, which would have come up on the screen, my mood, my energy is still low. My mood is pretty neutral. Another three out of five day. Uh, I think it's, you know, excellent is five and, you know, downright uh, grumpy or garbage is one. If you sort of think of that as a scale, I think that will be adequate going forward for the next few months. Um, somebody said, hey, you know, it's Friday, you know, go and break your fast or whatever, break your protocol. And when you're doing something like this, <clears throat> uh, there's an expression that I heard 20 years ago from Tony Robbins, I think said it, he was quoting somebody else. So I can't remember who he was quoting and it was nothing tastes as good as being healthy feels. And so even today, when I ate more than I normally would and I felt bloated, I didn't feel good. It didn't, I wasn't like, oh yes, that was good. I ate a whole bunch more. It doesn't make you feel better, especially when you're exercising. That bloated feeling is, is quite unpleasant. But people have become so accustomed to feeling that bloated feeling and that massively carb uh, carbohydrate and sugar uh, pumped feeling that they don't really know any other way. And there's been times before where I've been hanging out with people and they haven't had sugar for a while and then they feel like sugar. So I said, okay, let's go gorge ourselves on sugar and then next day, wake up and tell me how you feel. And inevitably they'll call you and they say, I feel like I'm hungover. I feel like garbage. And that's exactly what sugar does to you. But people don't know because they're constantly eating sugar. They always think that that sugar crash feeling is just how they naturally feel because they are addicted to sugar and carbohydrates, folks. Addictions come in many forms. It's not just people that are drunks and, you know, cigarette smokers or hooked on heroin or methamphetamine or all the other drugs that you hear about in the news. Sugar is right up there. It's the granddaddy of ultimate addictions and few people that I know can live without sugar because they're massively addicted to it. Anyway, that's eight minutes, day five in the bag. I'm feeling all right, having a whinge, having a day off. Back to it tomorrow. Love you all, take it easy.